All right. So this is it is Tuesday, February or uh, March eighth, and this is Senate Government Operations. We're looking at um, S two fifty one, which is a <coughs> bill to divest our uh, pension funds from uh, fossil fuel companies. And I understand that uh, there is a an amendment. Um, so Becky, would you like to? Um, and she, Becky can put it up on the screen for us. It's a pretty short amendment and um, okay, thank you. Great, uh, so Becky Wasserman, Legislative Council, and I will share this with you. Sorry, I'm just getting used to doing this in my office. Uh, <laughs> I think that works. Okay. Um, just trying to see if you can all see that is that big enough yeah. I, I yes it is for me thank you um okay so this is um s251 and it's a strike all amendment mm -hmm. uh the bill is an act relating to divestment of state pension funds from fossil fuel companies uh that's the uh, title as introduced um so the underlying bill as introduced um, had a schedule for um, this, the divesting from the state uh, pension funds over a certain period of time, any um, investments in uh, companies with uh, fossil fuel, uh, the, the highest companies with fossil fuel uh, reserves. And this is changing the bill to a, uh, a report, a study and report so section one is a now um, a report that is coming from the Joint Public Pension Oversight Committee. Um, and this is, was established uh, last year. It's a joint committee of all legislators. Uh, it was established in the um, pension bill that the legislature passed last year. Um, so that committee, uh, in furtherance of the Vermont Climate Action Plan's goal of preparing the state's economy to adapt to the current and anticipated effects of climate change is being tasked with studying and providing recommendations on a plan for the state to divest any direct or indirect direct interest in companies that hold fossil fuel reserves um, from the three retirement systems, the state employee system, the teacher system, and the municipal retirement system. The plan shall require that divestment from all three systems occur on or before, um, oop, there's an extra word there, I have to take that out, on or before July 1st, 2027. Um, in developing the plan, the committee will consult with the treasurer, the chair of the Vermont Pension Investment Commission, and any interested stakeholders that have investment and environmental expertise. Subsection B of section one um, is a report requirement. So by January 15th of next year, the committee shall submit a report um, which would include recommendations for legislative action um, on this study of uh, the study and plan for divestment to the House and Senate committees on government operations. And then section two has this uh, bill taking effect on July 1st, 2022. And then lines seven through nine um, would change the title of the bill after uh, the amendment passes to an act relating to the study of divestment of state pension funds from fossil fuel interests. Thank you. Would you go back up to page one, the bottom of page one? I want to see that date. 2027. Yeah. It says shall require that so it, it, it is being very directive here and saying that it has to happen before 2027. Yeah, so the, the plan they're coming up with is, I guess the goal of that plan would be that divestment occurs by that date. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, yeah. obviously if they submit a report to the legislature, uh, that's just the, the recommendation for the plan, but that would be the goal of, of divestment. Right, okay. Okay, well, I wish um, we had Senator Clarkson here because she was the um, 
So I, you, I think you can take that down unless anybody else wants to keep it up. Oh, sorry. I can put it back up. No, I, I think we're fine. So I guess what I'm going to do is ask, um, first of all, do any committee members have a, any drafting questions for Becky? No. Okay. It's so nice to see those guys sitting in the, our room there. I'm very jealous of them. Hi, guys. Uh, oh, we have? Yeah. Oh, we started at 1. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we started at 1.30. No, we're starting at one o'clock every day this week because of. I'm so sorry, Madam Chair. I missed. I, I clearly didn't focus on that. I apologize. Yep. Every day this week, we're starting at one. Except um, whatever day we're on the floor at one. Um, so Madam we Chair, just. Can I, can I just. I don't yes, know if it's. Second. I don't know if someone is manually doing this, but. I don't know if Gal is aware that the camera keeps zooming in and out. So I just wanted to let you know, unless in case you did not know that. Well, that, happened, know that, that, that happened. I'm sorry. Sorry. I didn't know you were there, Gal. Sorry. Becky, I, I do know that. And I'm trying okay. to find out. This is the first day with the in room camera. So I'm trying to figure out how to keep it from panning. So it moves as their sound it follows the sound is that the idea it does mm -hmm. i guess it's unclear though uh, well it didn't move then right we can see all all four of you so i think it probably makes sense to just let it be stationary if that works but <clears throat> okay so um we just went through the amendment here and i guess I, what i would like is um to tom and eric do you have any unless there are, are drafting questions first of becky we didn't get that resolved huh? no i i thought it was good so um tom eric would you like to comment on this uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, thanks for having us here again. You know, I know this is a we've had this is the third meeting on this topic. Um, I want to start by saying this is the first time I've read it, so I'm sort of trying to trying to figure out the implications of each. There's two things that kind of jump out. First of all, I'm all in favor of the study because I think it can further the work that we did in 2016, 2017 with the Treasurer's Office. So any study, particularly with the new Pension Oversight Committee. I think is a tremendous improvement in, in what you've written here. So it's, it's, it's moving towards the goals of working with the new pension oversight committee. A uh, couple things though I see in here, it kind of presupposes the outcome. What if the outcome of the study is that we wanna work more in policy engagement or we wanna work more towards um, mitigation of effects in direct holdings versus indirect holdings and we wanna protect our private equity because there's a lot of other issues that could be affected by mandating and this seems to me that it's it's presupposing that divestment is the only outcome of this study committee and that would be a concern of mine and then the second thing just initially looking at it um i know uh this the, the gentleman who spoke with us last time from canada as i recall he had they had worked <laughs> new york had worked with um uh makita and i know the prices makita charges and a study like this probably would run somewhere between Fifty to one hundred thousand uh, dollars to to work with the committee. So I would assume I would recommend if if there is a request for a, a study, which I, I do support, um, you put in some monies to fund it because we don't have it in the budget for VPIC in the current iteration going through House gov House appropriations right now. Um, and so if there is the anticipation of a study. Uh, we already have two studies that we're anticipating this year. One is a compensation study to look at the structure of BPIC. And the second was the uh, liability study to look at the liabilities of the different assets of the plan. So adding this in would, would be another one, but it would also take some extra funding. So I'd recommend adding a line item like you did with the pension task force last year. And I know you added at that point, like 250,000. I don't think it would be that much, but I could refer to Eric in that regard. So Two comments, basically, I don't think you should presuppose what the committee would study the finding would be. And second, add some funding in, into the legislation so we could go to um, 
and get it in this fiscal year so we'd be able to afford it into the summer. But thank you. Thanks, Tom. Eric? Nothing to add regarding the bill. I have a number of thoughts on divestment as we've uh, been thinking about it at the commission level. I submitted this morning a copy of my latest report to the commission. And please keep in mind that was written two weeks before the invasion of Ukraine. And what we've seen essentially is uh, ampl amplification of how complicated this transition to a low carbon world will be. For example, this morning, you see nickel prices up by uh, 250%. As you probably know, they're a key ingredient in um, e electric vehicle batteries. Um, we've seen that broad divestment of fossil fuels does not uh, reduce fossil fuel emissions. We think higher, ha higher energy prices will. We think more efficient vehicles will, but ultimately uh, reducing fossil fuel emissions requires changing consumer behaviors, changing people commuting, having long commutes from the exurbs into cities, changing our reliance on disposable plastic bottles, changing our uh, reliance on these on on uh, polluting agricultural methods. All of these things are consumer behaviors that are not impacted by divestment. Divestment simply, in our view, sells the shares off to a potentially less responsible shareholder at a discounted price. And, and we're seeing news of that this morning with China sniffing around some of these divested energy holdings in Russia. And we're, we, do, we do have some concerns that Russia, that China's oversight of production and processing of petrochemicals is probably not going to be as effective as those of the prior owners, the Western companies that have divested of these things. And I would say finally that liquidating these holdings when there is concern about ultimate valuation is always an option. Uh, we've seen that over the last two weeks as we've divested of all of our Russian holdings. Uh, this was not based on a political headline, but based on a detailed analysis of facts by the experts that we've hired for us. So our emerging market debt manager, for example, had begun to liquidate all of the holdings of Russian debt before the market seized up. Uh, the index providers followed suit very quickly and removed Russian holdings from all of the MSCI indexes and the JP Morgan indexes. Uh, essentially pulling them out of our portfolio. And then finally, it's, I think it's tempting to say that the, the transition to a low carbon environment will uh, kind of leave the big energy companies behind, uh, but that's not what we're seeing. What we're seeing is Chevron, for example, buying up, uh, it's called the uh, Renewable Energy Group. So these, these fossil fuel companies are making investments in uh, the transition technologies to get us to a, a low carbon economy. And you're seeing that reflected in their share prices. Chevron, for example, and ExxonMobil are up almost 50% year to date as a result of what's happening. Uh, we think this will take time. We think it will take patience, but our investment managers are working very hard to effect these changes, doing things like developing more effective technologies for charging electric vehicle batteries, setting up um, fast casual restaurants at the charging station so that if it takes 30 minutes to charge a vehicle when you're on a road trip, you can go in and grab a sandwich. Uh, reducing uh, the use of petrochemicals in agriculture. We have technology, uh, a technology fund that's investing in smarter technologies. We have managers that are uh, promoting the use of more sustainable methods of controlling pesticides. Mm -hmm. We think our managers are taking a proactive approach to this. We don't believe that divestment in and of itself will reduce uh, fossil fuel emissions. Uh, we do believe that innovation that makes it more convenient for consumers to change their behaviors will do so, and we are investing in those technologies. Uh, VPIC does support uh, the goal of reducing carbon emissions. I think it's in everybody's best interest. The, the question is, how do you best get there? And as we've shown in our engagement efforts with Hess, for example, where we've gotten them to agree to reduce flaring in the Bakken region, uh, our shareholder proxy votes are very effective tools in promoting change. We have a voice through these votes. It's a very loud voice and we take it very serious through our proxy voting policies. Uh, again, we share your goal of reducing these emissions. We just question whether divestment is the right tool to do it. Thank you, Eric. Um, are there any any questions? I, I have to admit that I, I'm always, um, <clears throat> Not suspicious, but I, I'm always um, concerned when we 
ask for a study with a when we presuppose what the outcome is going to be of that study. It, this, this isn't a study of whether or not we should, how, how best to, to um, move toward uh, more sustainable funds, but <clears throat> it, it's presupposing that divestiture is the only result. Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, so and, as everyone knows, thousands of, 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 of nonprofits and pension funds, I mean, huge numbers of, of institutions across this country and across the world have divested. Uh, and to, to, no, it's to, to, to no ill effect, uh, it is a, a major gap in the climate action plans uh, proposals that they don't address uh, this issue at all. And uh, I'm happy to work with Tom honing this language with Becky, the three of us could certainly do that. But I think it's very important that we look, take another look at this. And uh, it doesn't need to be quite as prescriptive, but I, I, I'm very, uh, I, I think this goes part and parcel with the rest of our climate action plan work and addresses, uh, you know, dirty money and money that makes us very uh, 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 open to some of the really tough lawsuits that are going to come down the pike. We, there's a huge liability by staying invested in fossil fuel companies. Uh, they are going to be hammered uh, and they are going to be, be you know, I, I, I think this is a real and important thing for us to be looking at. And, and I would hope that the study would look at that, the potential liability of staying in, uh, in invested in, in these fossil fuel companies, which uh, in many ways are going to bear the brunt and the blame for what has, uh, for, for the cleanup uh, that we need to do in our world for us to, uh, for, uh, for us to remain sustainable as a, as a planet. So I think that we could find some middle ground and maybe Becky, Tom, you and I could uh, work to come up with something. Tom, if you wanted to propose something back for Becky and me to look at, that would be, that would be great. I, I, you know, Senator I just, Rahm, sorry. let me see, see what Senator Rahm had, had her hand up. Um, well, I guess I was going to say, I think this is the middle ground. Um, you know, I would, I would like to see us move in this direction. And I wouldn't say that anyone's moving the goalposts right now. But what I thought I heard in the previous testimony was, we get it, we understand, you know, uh, the, the intent and wanting to move in this direction. We just want to see it look more like New York and have a timeline that is a, a, a phasing and something that we can um, sort of work with in a fiscally responsible way. But I, I really think it's critical at this juncture, especially in this moment in history, that uh, we say we intend to divest and right. this is studying how to get there. I, I, I would oppose a bill that creates an off ramp because I think, you know, we've heard that. There, these things are happening. And I think that, you know, from the testimony I've heard and what I've read and seen in other states, you know, it feels insufficient to meet the moment. And I think this is the compromise. Uh, uh, I agree that it's in that vein that I, uh, we offered this as a group, but I, um, I also think if there is a line, it, I would be interested in seeing what Tom was at least willing to propose because I agree with you, Keisha. I think this is the middle ground. <laughs> Because I think this is something we need to be doing, and we just need to figure out a timeline and how to do it. Tom? Well, my only concern is that a middle ground could also be a, a strong policy that BPIC about, adopts, and that is working through our investment managers. The problem with broad-based legislation is that it will inevitably have unintended consequences on the construction of our portfolio. The language of this bill as written, and this is where I can work with you, Senator Clarkson, in regards to formulating language, you're talking directly held or indirectly held. And that gets to my point from a couple of weeks ago that we don't really, we, we hire managers and part of our strategy to get us the 7% rate of return assumption is to move more towards private um, equity, private debt where we have significantly less control in regards to the, man, we're a general partner and we commit years and years ahead of time. And so to get in the top quartile of that group, we give up some of our control of the day-to-day -day manage of the investments for the benefit of being able to say, well, we overall on our portfolio can meet the 7% return assumption. 
this bill seems to lump that together with everything we have versus just our directly held investments. And so looking at the language, maybe excluding that from this discussion, I don't wanna water it down. I, I wanna work with the committee through our policy development because I think that's where we'll have much more uh, material impacts, at least in a quicker amount of time. You know, you're talking 2027 here, which doesn't sound that 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 soon. Um, but from a contracting point of view, it is very soon, particularly since we've already committed about 600 million or so or uncommitted capital to some of our private strategies. Would we have to unwind any of those? How would this impact? And so, I welcome the idea of, of working on this. I just, I. I don't know if legislation is the proper vehicle versus policy development, as well as active inter interaction with the oversight committee to get to a common goal. And I guess that's what I'll end with. I, I so, would add that uh, we do have formed an ESG committee at the commission. We've referred a draft policy to that commission that's attached to my memo. Uh, the committee will be working through that policy in terms of figuring out how can we best position BPIC assets to not only maximize those returns, but also to affect positive change in terms of global climate change and other issues that are important to be picking up in Vermont. We did find a study, a 2016 study by the Boston College Retirement Research Center that I think emphasizes your point, Tom, about statutory mandates. That study found that pension state plans that have a mandated divestment program their returns lag those that didn't have those mandates by 40 basis points. So, <clears throat> so it seems to me that the, there are three things in here that would not water it down, but that would instead that we would direct a study, set up a study that would talk about the direct held and leave out indirect held. It would also require the um, oversight committee to come up with with FIPIC and the treasurer's office um, to develop a policy toward divestiture um, and uh, present a timeline for that divestiture. I think that's what uh, yes. when Senator Rom Hinsdale was talking, she talked about the New York plan that had a a plan. A, a timeline attached to it. So if, if we had those three changes here so that we didn't, we didn't impose the deadline, we took out indirect and we asked them to actually develop a policy that would lead us toward divestiture. Does that make any sense at all? Or am I not understanding it? I would say that, I would say that, um, a policy and a plan may be the same thing, I would hope. Because I think what, what we don't want to see is just another study. We want to see no. a plan of action that's going to move us mm -hmm. forward. And, you know, I hate to put, you know, say, but we are legislators. We do legislate. That's what we do. And sometimes you have to legislate to make things happen. That's, right. that's because divestment is not happening. Right. But I'd, I'd argue yeah. that the last study we did in 2017 said divestment would be detrimental to the beneficiaries of the pension plans. Right. Well, we've economy. seen it. It's, and it's so if we don't get around it, the country and around the world. But if we don't get a study that counteracts that, the current one that's specific to Vermont already says it's not in the best interest. And so I think a study makes a tremendous amount of sense, but I do not support just blanket changing us saying we support divestment because I don't. The current study right now says it would be detrimental to Vermont. And I would we actually argue, need to do a survey of those places that have already divested and see how many of them regret it. But we don't have 50, but they don't all have 50,000 beneficiaries with unfunded liabilities of $2 billion. I think we've, you know, well, I, I'm, I can't support something that's going to just, you know, the conversation we're having now is the conversation that you're supposed to be having with the study committee, with the people developing a plan, not with me and you. That's well, all we I have to, to be start it. You have to start it with, well, what is this study committee going to be looking at? If you're already presupposing it's going to be looking that, at the best, it's going to be looking at the best strategies to divest. But what if divestment is at only one tool that is used? The divestment is the one we're talking about. I know that there's other things that can happen in the world. I'm not saying divestment is the be all and end all of the universe, but this is bill is about divestment. That's what people are talking about. That's what New York did. That's what that's what Harvard did. That's what you know all these other people, entities are doing. 
I'd be so, willing to support yeah, it. Another thing is cutting them up. There's study kids, like the things that Eric was talking about, the different factors Eric was talking about could certainly come up while this study is going on as well. I'm not saying it's, it's exclusive to divestment per se, but the overall arching goal is to have divestment from fossil fuel companies. I mean, if we're not going to do that, then forget it. I mean, what's the point? I'm not saying we're not going to do that over time. I think it will happen simply because the markets are moving towards that. However, you do want do not want to jeopardize the state pension plans and force us to lower our rate of return assumptions by eliminating. Well, well, let's see, but if, but if the group got together, the group that we're talking about in this amendment got together and talked it through and did the research and found out that it would hurt the retirement funds, then they would probably propose not doing it. No, well, I think I, retirement funds. I, I think that the that we need to change some language in this because this this bill, the way it's written, does not suppose that the study could come back saying that at this point divestiture would be harmful. It doesn't give any option for that. Uh, what it says is that there sh everything shall be divested by 2017, by 2027. That's what it says. And that they need to um, figure out how they're going to do it by 27, 27. And I think that the three things that were pointed out, and then I see Eric has his hand up, is that it's both direct and indirect. That seems to be an issue. That we're asking them to develop a plan and a timeline to move toward divestiture. That it, it's... I, I don't see why how that is watering it down to anyway, um, Eric. It seems to me that the ultimate goal of divesting is really to reduce global fossil fuel emissions. Yeah. And perhaps that should be our end goal. And that's certainly how we think about it. That not only are we deploying these assets to maximize returns and pay down these unfunded liabilities, but to affect positive climate results, to affect positive change by these polluters, to hold management teams accountable for things other than the bottom line and their stock options. We've shown that with HESP, we've shown that with prosperity bank shares, we've shown that with company after company after company, where we engage through our proxy votes to accomplish things that we think are positive from an environmental, social and governance standpoint. That's what we're doing with our draft policy. We've talked to Cal California, we've talked to New York, we've talked to Maine, they all share that view um, we just don't see the connection between a blanket divestment program and a reduction in fossil fuel emissions when we have more powerful tools to affect that change. Um, we may have to disagree on that. <laughs> Casey, you're... Yeah, okay. Senator Raman, Sal. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't want to speak for others on the committee, but I, I think you have, you know, at least three members of the committee who are who are struggling with uh, further compromise on this bill. And I think for good reason, I mean, you, you mentioned Maine, New York, California, they might still be using some other practices and um, proxy voting to, you know, further reduce their, their uh, con contribution to greenhouse gas emissions, but they have all put themselves on a path to divest. So I'm just not sure what comparison we're making there. Um, I think 2027 is a really reasonable goal given the urgency of the moment that we're in and I hope everyone on this on this call has read the IPCC report that we are now engaged in an atlas of human suffering um, by continuing to stay invested in fossil fuels and have a fossil fuel based economy um, that's going to result in loss of life habitat um, economic value and uh, you know, possible climate failure. So I just don't see, I, I think we also have to recognize in the moment that we're in that this even goes beyond reducing emissions. We are investing in companies and countries that have uh, been bad actors who are heavily reliant on their own oil and gas reserves or annexing those of other countries. Um, and I just think saying, you know, we want to stay at the table and work with them to do better. Um, it's sort of beyond the time for that. It just seems like this is, I, I'm just not willing to entertain that at this point. 
I don't think that's what we're saying. So, I think what I'm saying is the state of Vermont has three investment staff. We rely on indexing for a significant portion of our investment strategy. This bill would force me to reevaluate that situation. And I'm going to tell you, if we index four billion out of six billion, one basis point increase increases cost by four hundred thousand dollars to the beneficiaries of the state of Vermont. If we have to change our strategy completely, this bill as it's written today, implies that all direct holdings as well as indirect, which means I have to look at the whole portfolio. If I have to change it by two basis points or three basis points or four basis points, well, that's a million dollars extra in fees that the state, state of Vermont are gonna have to absorb either through increased taxes or decreased rate of return assumptions. And so I'm trying to balance it. I'm thinking a policy would be the best approach. I'm not saying eventually we won't get to be divested, but if you're trying to squeeze out the last 1% of these bad actors at the uh, detriment of the rest of the 99% of the portfolio, I think you're going in the wrong direction. And that's where I would draw the line. And so I don't necessarily think divestment can't be a tool. I think by using it as a, the exclusive tool is going to seriously jeopardize Vermont. And, and this I, I, I'd argue that at any committee that I'd have to go to. And I will need to get at least 100,000 to do this study. And so I'll have to go to the Appropriations Committee if you want it done this year. But this is exactly our point with selling our Russian holdings. There's no point in trying to engage there with these bad actors. We simply divested of them without a mandate. But we, we, we concluded that we couldn't affect any positive change there. We've exhausted every route of uh, engagement that could have been there. There was no future for them, so we sold them. So do you so, believe you're now indirectly out of Russian investment as well? They're not tradable. Russian investments aren't tradable. And we, we had limited amount anyway before this. Um, I think our, ironically, our gains in ExxonMobil and Chevron have offset our losses in probably all of our Russian holdings. And so net net, we're probably even um, with the goal of getting out of them completely once the markets reopen. But that's a different issue. That's not necessarily divestment. That's getting out of an untradable investment um, for a lot right. of reasons, more geopolitical versus, versus fossil fuel, even though fossil fuel has a component of that because of the, the Russian component is very much you know, fossil mm -hmm. fuel investments. And, and it, it, it made up a portion of our 2.5% that we talked about last time as being the whole exposure to those 200 names that, that came up on the list. So I believe we will get there. And I believe we will get there. But I just am worried that mandated legislation without really having the study behind us is a bad move. So, so I'm gonna I, I'm gonna ask we keep referring to New York and their plan and everybody seems to think that that's the that's the gold standard. What what is their plan? What I mean do they their have is, their plan is a policy. There is no a, legislation at this point. Okay so it and it's a policy. Yeah. It's a policy. It's a broad statement. So Tom Lee made broad statements that he's going to be divested by 2040, as I, I believe. Um, by when? Depending on the city or the state. I think no. it depends on if it's the city or the state. Well, we keep Tom talking Lee. about the New York plan. So what are we talking about? I refer to the New York state plan, which is Tom Lee. Okay and the chief investment officer's plan for the state of New York. And his plan is to divest immediately out of certain issues and then to um, over time use his proxy voting and to create an internal list whereby they will divest if they failed certain tests over time. And then they'll complete, they'll use that as a last resort to get rid of those positions. Um, Eric can probably fill in more in regards to Tom's specific policy. So I just, I, I wanna, I thought that when we were having something drafted here, that it was going to be reflective of how of the New York state policy. But this does not, it does not seem reflective of the New York state policy. So now I'm really confused because I thought that when we talked about it before, everybody said, yes, the New York state policy is where we should be going, but we're not. We're, we don't have those same steps in here. We're saying an absolute by 2027. They're saying there are certain steps that you have to meet. And when you can't 
when you can't do it this way, then you do it this way. That so I'm I'm really confused here because I thought that that was the redraft that we were going to see. Well, <laughs> at this point, Madam Chair, in, in our committee process, we felt that actually giving the um, the oversight committee uh, a work and and we could add language to look at the New York model and incorporate the New York model as they uh, propose a strategy for divestment. And I would be. Uh, we, I'd be happy. I, I think we'd be happy to to do that. I think uh, just to step back. What by passing the Global Warming Solutions Act, we have committed as a state to doing all we can to make ourselves responsible actors in the world, and divesting from 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 fossil fuel industries uh, is is to to say we don't want to invest. We do not have the value. We do not support the value of what it, it means to be invested in a fossil fuel company. And the, I, to me, this is just fundamental to the work that we're trying to do, the bigger policy work as a state. So this is consistent with our goals as a state to do this over time. I am, and Anthony and Keisha and I uh, haven't spoken together with Becky, but we could certainly build in uh, a reference to the New York model and to the uh, oversight committee looking at, as Tom, you know, to looking at the New York model as something to incorporate as one of the things to review and, and perhaps recommend. Well, I, I think that it needs to be more of a change than that because this, this draft clearly says direct and indirect, it clearly says all divestiture done by 2027. It clearly right. says those two things. And that that is not what the, so if we were gonna say that they should um, look at the New York plan and uh, incorporate the New York plan or aspects of the New York plan, we couldn't have those two things in here. And I also just, and I, I don't have any problems with us divesting of, of bad actors and um, companies. But I also want to remind us that Tom has just said that he will need $100,000 to just to do the study. And that if he has to do this now, because this is by 2027, this is 23, it's going to be 23 before this study gets done, then that leaves four years. So they have to, they're going to have to reassess all of their, their, um, with, with the three people that they have, they're going to have, have to reassess everything. And they're going to, um, it's going to cost over a million dollars. And I want to remind us that we just came up with a, a really hard fought um, pension plan to save our pensions, pension funds. And I, I'm, I'm happy to divest of fossil fuel companies, but now if it's going to cost us a million dollars over the next four years, we're going to be, we're, we're just screwing ourselves on our pension on what we just, the hard fought concessions that we just made. And we don't want to put those in jeopardy and we don't, there's right. no intention to put the pension funds in jeopardy. Well, it, it is, is if we're going to lose a million dollars. What if we, we, we could, if we ask this pension committee, to come up with a plan for an investment based upon the models in New York and maybe add one or two others and ask them to come up with a plan. In other words, it would be similar to us over a summer study in a way, like interviewing people from New York and saying, how did you do it? Why, why did you decide to do that? I don't see why that would cost the state 50 or $100,000 because we're not talking about coming up with a plan. We're talking about looking at plans that already exist and picking one that works for us. Right. That's not what the study says. I don't know. I'm not saying, saying that's what I'm saying we should say. That's, I'm okay. Just, I'm yeah. making it a, a change. It's not what this bill says. I mean, I, I, I support this amendment that's been yeah. drafted, but I want to say I, I haven't seen it until this afternoon either. But I think I would be willing to entertain an idea where we said that our intention is to divest. We know that there are other good models, entities that have already divested. We propose that the Pensions Oversight Committee look at a plan, to come up with a plan to divest based upon certain models that we know are in use already, and say New York and maybe one or two others. 
And that would that date would not be the same either. I mean, they they the, the, the date the 27, 27, 2027 date would not necessarily be relevant anymore either. Right. Might happen. So wrong. The easier well, ones might be might be next year, and then the longer ones, the ones where you wait try to change their behavior before the the rest of them, that would take longer. Yeah. And our, our Senator goal. Rom Hinsdale. So I think it's a fair and valid question to ask how New York did this, whether it was a policy imposition or coming from their comptroller. I don't know if their comptroller is personally, I don't know if they're elected or appointed by the governor or what political pressure they feel. So they're elected. So, you know, I, um, I think I, I had put um, a couple emails that would lead us to the comptroller's office for the witness list. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I think there are many ways in which we should let them speak for themselves, but I just want to set the record straight from my understanding that uh, the, the New York State Comptroller, um, you know, who has touched on divestment efforts at, at the legislative level and thanked you know, certain senators and, and members of the legislature, the assembly in New York for their advocacy work, um, you know, committed to without legislation necessarily needing to pass full review of every fossil fuel investment, a commitment to fully decarbonize the pension fund by 2040 with phased target dates and a reporting schedule that has an annual report and the immediate divestments in the next, you know, few years or, you know, on their more tight timeline they have divested from 22 coal companies. They are divest. They probably have divested since you know um, in in the last couple of years from tar sand investments. They are divesting from shale oil and gas, um, major oil and gas like Exxon and Chev uh, Exxon and Chevron. Um, all oil and gas exploration that is looking to pull new fossil fuels out of the ground fossil fuel service firms and fossil fuel transportation and pipeline companies. So that's a more immediate divestment approach they're taking. We are not the treasurer or the comptroller. It is hard for us to be as surgical about what can be phased in more quickly and what's gonna take longer to decarbonize the entire portfolio. Um, you know, Maybe we should use language like decarbonize because even more than divesting from fossil fuel companies, it's saying we don't want to invest in further carbonization of the atmosphere, which can include transportation and a lot of other um, you know, elements. I think mm -hmm. what New York did is pretty impressive. If we can track to that, great. Um, you know, but I just want to make it clear that they have a longer term timeline, but a very short term incisive commitment, um, you know, to, to things that they know they are specific and direct, they can divest from while they work on the indirect. Uh, right. divestment. That's hard for us to do as legislators, but yeah. we don't, we need leadership to have that kind of plan in place. But that's, and that, that I believe is what this amend, what is trying to happen, what I thought was going to happen with this amendment, it was that it was going to direct the treasurer and BPEC to work with the oversight committee to come up, to, to develop a policy similar to what New York is doing. And, and they have their the complete divestiture at 2040, and we have it at 2023, that's 17 Years right. difference. I mean, really, what were we thinking? We were ambitious. Well, I don't think I think twenty twenty seven. I got three. I got three people working on this. New York has hundreds. California yeah. has hundreds. They so, index themselves. I don't. We can't do this that quickly. I just really caution you to to be careful here. I would be happy to work with this new Joint Pension Oversight Commission, and I will commit to make this a priority of VPIC over the next year or two and make make frequent reports when you legislate it though it becomes a mandate and then you need you you need monies to bring in uh consultants even the gentleman from Ca from Ca canada said you they brought in makita maine brought in cambridge associates and makita to to address all of their investments those those cost a tremendous amount of money so so we need to move this, figure out a way to uh, move this forward. And, and I don't know, um, I'm, I'm not clear at the moment. I'm, uh, I guess I'm, uh, on, how, on how we can move this forward, but I'm happy to uh, chat with, uh, Becky's gone off the call, sadly. I think she's no longer with us. Um, well, no, but, she is there, but, but we, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, 
I'm going to put a, a little bit of reality in here. We This is Tuesday. We have um, six bills that we're trying to get out of here, I believe. I think it's six before Friday. I was really hoping that this would I, have I, been... I, I, I was hoping that, that we could we could do that too, Madam Chair. And I, I'm I'm happy to commit to, to to working on something with Keisha and Anthony, Becky, and and Tom. That if we could meet uh, at some point fairly soon in the ne next 24 hours, that we could come up with language that we could agree to to keep this alive and move it to the House. Keeping in mind that we don't need 100 people to come up with the analysis and the plan. You need more people, staff people, maybe to implement the plan. And not to come up with the plan. But but you need people, you, no, but you do need people. As Tom has pointed out, New York and California have a lot of people work. They do their own, their own. Um, right. They do it in house. Betting, betting of their investments. Right. But we that's not coming have, up with the plan. That's implementing the plan. Um, but even, okay. All right. Okay. So I will. I will say, if you can come up with something that talks about coming up with uh, a policy that um, doesn't talk about 2027, I, I could never vote for that. I, I just, I mean, it would be lovely if we could do it by 2027, but I, there's no way. And that talks about maybe Senator Rom Hinsale is right, maybe divesting from fossil fuel is not the, the term here. Maybe it's um, how to best decarbonize um, our investments. Um, if that's the right term that I used, Keisha, I'm not sure that I oh, used that right, but you know what they, I mean. They did have short-term divestments directly yeah. from fossil fuel companies and long-term decarbonization. Yeah, right, and I better. think it's, yeah, that's where the decarbonization is used, Long, yeah. long-term. So, um, okay, Tom, can be, be in touch, but uh, maybe we could all touch base, or maybe Becky. Becky, what, do you have any time tomorrow during lunch? I'm available tomorrow after ten thirty to two, and then from three to four. So may, maybe we could. Maybe we could. Uh, Anthony and Keisha and Becky, maybe Becky, if, if you had some time at 12 noon, we could do some work together at that point. Okay, I have time then. Okay. Could you do that? Anthony? Okay. Okay. okay, great. Let's put something together and try and, and move this forward because I uh, really, I think three of us would really like very much to at least get this to the house in some form that is workable. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would like to do something too, but I don't think this is this is it. Okay. We've and can you give me money to do this? Is it that, that this committee or is that? The... No, I, I don't know that. Um... Money. Can, can it cost us 50 grand to do this study in 2016, 2017? It's we not had... a study. We're not talking about doing a study. We're talking about looking at New York and a couple of other states and analyzing them. It's not a study. No. It... You need You're somebody to do that. A plan. Somebody's got to do it. And if you're looking, you're not, you're looking at five, at six legislators on the oversight committee and Tom and Eric and Beth, that's what you're looking at here. Right. That Those are the people that, and they, you are asking them to come up with a plan. That is a study. In order to come up with a plan, you have to have a study to come up it with. It doesn't have to cost $50,000 is what I'm saying. We need subject matter experts, similar to what the pension task force used to come up with a cohesive plan that we could implement over that period of time. And it will and if, cost that amount. And California and Maine, they all, they all used um, people to do the studies. So I, I just, I'm gonna go to Senator Rahm Hinsdale and then Eric, and then we're gonna switch gears here. I mean, this is where I, I can try and reach out to someone in New York or whatever would be helpful, but you know, I, I'm just curious in making sure that our appropriation is well placed and, you know, it's paying a consultant a hundred plus thousand dollars versus having a staff person dedicated to, to carrying this through seems to be a question in my mind. I just want to make sure 
Tom, have you talked to other states about how they've done it? Not just they have a lot well, of staff, but I agree. If we had the staff that we could allocate time for it. But remember, the legislature has also asked me to put a compensation study for this new VPIC. The integration of VPIC as a new entity is going on this next year. The asset liability study to match our liabilities for long to, to match the three billion un, underfunded to make sure. So we already have our current investments to have really full out over the next six to 12 months. And so to get another, to squeeze, I think we'll lose Katie and Andy if, if we try to make them do something else. In addition to have Katie work with Beth in regards to all of the ESG work that she does. Cause I, I think I gave you that report last time. There's like 11 pages of things that Katie's been doing on there. So I'd love to have another two people that could help me with this. And I'd love to be able to tell you that we could, we could fit this in. I'll do my best to see where we can get at. And we have a good idea about it, but will it have the weight uh, that I could use to meet our fiduciary obligation to the pension trust. And without having a third party come in and verify that, I'd be very hesitant to say we could do it in that time. We'll do our best, but I, I, that's why I said 50 grand to 100 grand makes sense to me just because that's what it cost us four years ago. So if, if we're going to meet tomorrow 12 noon, Tom, if you could think further about what we could do for less, uh, because I think it's a legis, you know, we were thinking of this as a legislative oversight committee and not with a budget other than paying the legislature. Well, has that committee, has that committee so, met yet? I haven't, I, that oversight commission committee hasn't met yet. So it, no. I, this is, I don't even know the members, all the members have been appointed yet, but I, I, I'm looking forward to meeting with that, that committee. I, I have not they've been appointed, at least the senators have. I have no idea who, if the House has appointed members yet. Right. So, um, Becky, you and I can figure out who's going to send out a Zoom invite, but we'll send out a Zoom invite. Tom, Anthony, and Becky, and Keisha. Is that okay for 12 noon tomorrow? Yep. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Tom, Eric, Becky. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.